Hello. In this video, we're going to show what it looks and feels like to use Garden. We won't get into too much technical detail, but rather focus on everyday developer activities. The project I'll be demoing is a distributed voting application that consists of several services, a Postgres database, and a Redis key value store. I'll start in my terminal and run the Garden dev command. This tells Garden to build and deploy the project into a remote, production-like environment. It also enables dev mode, which means that Garden will live reload code changes from my laptop to the running service without needing a rebuild or a redeploy. This ensures instant feedback and allows me to stay in the zone as I develop. Because everything is remote, I don't need any dependencies on my laptop. I just need a clone of the repo and then I can get to work. On the stack graph page in Garden Cloud, I can view my stack graph and watch the progress. I can also look at a list view of my modules and get logs for individual builds, tests, tasks and deploys. Now that Garden has finished deploying my project, I can find the URL to the live application, our distributed voting app. Again, this is all running remotely in a production-like environment. Next, I'm going to open the StackStreams modal. StackStreams provides real-time observability for developers. It shows you logs from pretty much anything that happens in your system on a timeline, including build and service logs, as well as task and test results. Notice how the logs update as I interact with the app. This tells me how information flows through the system, from the vote service, to the API service, to the results service. Having deployed my application in dev mode and verified that things work as expected, I can get to work. Dev mode means that Garden will live reload code changes from my laptop to the running service, without needing a rebuild or a redeploy. Here, I'm updating the vote front-end service that's responsible for rendering this UI. Sure enough, my application updates instantly. You'll notice how the logs in the StackStream view update as the server restarts. And now I'll switch the API server, which is written in Python. Those changes are also reflected immediately, as you can tell by the StackStream service logs for the API service. I'd like to highlight once more that all of this is running in a remote Kubernetes cluster, and that the front-end service and the API service are running in different pods. But for me as a developer, I don't need to know that. I just want to hop between source code files in my IDE and make the changes I need without having to worry about how the whole thing comes together at runtime. Another important feature of Garden is that tests are a first-class citizen. Now I'm going to introduce a bug into the code by changing this request type from post to put and then run the Garden test command. The project has an end-to-end -end test that validates the response status from the API server. However, developers are often only able to run end-to-end -end tests as part of their CI pipelines and not as they code. This often results in long waiting times. On the StackStreams page, I see real-time information from the test run. I can see events from Garden itself, as well as service logs from the services under test and the actual test results. As expected, my test fails. Notice that Garden first renders the log lines that show that the test has started in the leftmost pane, then the logs from the vote service under test, then the logs for the API service, which apparently received an invalid request, and then finally the failed test results, again in the leftmost log pane. This allows me to trace the events that happen in my system during a test and immediately spot where the issue is. Finally, I want to show you how Garden Cloud integrates with your VCS provider, for example GitHub or GitLab. This allows you to use Garden to create preview environments and run tests as part of your review process. At this point, I've committed my changes and opened a pull request. On the activity feed, I can see a list of pull requests with links to the respective preview environments. Here's the one for the design changes I made earlier, again, running in a production-like environment. This environment gets created and updated automatically and removed when the pull request is closed. This was a very high level video of a day in the life of a garden developer. There's a bunch more to unpack, so reach out if you want to learn more. Thanks for watching.